Hey guys, we just came into a new decade, and yet Black Desert Online is still one of the best and one of the most popular MMORPGs out there. So for those of you who are trying to come back or want to try out this game this year, then this video can help you choose which class to potentially get. As usual, there have been several buff and nerf on 2019, new class releases, and the most prominent update which is the Succession which is basically an alternate path you can get at level 56 aside from Awakening. Note however that the current succession paths are pretty much OP for most of the classes, and might get some nerf later on this year, so better keep that in mind as it's still an ongoing release and further balance might be made by Pearl Abyss, for better or for worse. But you can switch any time between succession and Awakening anyway with the free skill reset you can get with the Awakening quest. Without further ado, let's start with our first class which is the Warrior. He is one of the very first class to ever grace Black Desert, using Sword and Shield as main weapon and a great sword in Awakening. The Warrior has been a very balanced class in most of his time, a jack of all trades, master of none. And when I say master of none, I do not mean in a mediocre way, but more of a middle to better class in each criteria, though not really being a top tier of each. For Awakening, its PvE clear speed is okay, in low AP spots like Gas and Fogans, and thus slightly better in higher AP spots particularly in Hysteria. It shines though in 1 vs 1 PvP, which is very very important for long grinding session in order to defend your spot which happens a lot in a contested areas. While in large scale PvP, the removal of the lingering SA hurts Warrior a lot, making it a lot less tanky and forcing it to find other ways to engage the enemies. And to make this possible, you will need to learn most of its animation cancels and combo to gain the mobility needed. Going with the warrior's alternate path which is the succession, basically losing your great sword skills but still needing the attack points from your awakening weapon. Its PvE capability has massively increased both the low end spots and high end spots. They have less skills but those skills have massive amount of damage that gives warriors a very easy time in grinding. At the same time, he still maintains his PvP advantage amongst other classes with his grab and black, and this is true for both 1 vs 1 and large scale PvP, making Succession Warrior an all around top of the line class. So as you can see, just for the first class Succession update we got, we mostly believe that there will be an adjustment later as it simply makes the Awakening obsolete. It's either buffing the Awakening again or nerfing the Succession. But anyway, that's a talk for another time, and this is what it is. The next one we have is the Valkyrie. It is the female counterpart of the Warrior and the Paladin class equivalent in the world of Black Desert. A class composed of female warriors loyal to the cause of Elion, which is the god of light and fire. They wield sword and shield as main weapon and a huge lance in awakening. After a great nerf in stamina, the Valkyrie has been one of the worst grinder in low-end PvE, with its very limited dash range forcing you to walk most of the time. Once you get past of it though, then the Valkyrie shines in high AP spots, particularly in Scuria, Hysteria, and Star's End, having the huge burst damage and lots of buff and debuff skills. In small scale PvP, the Valkyrie is a pretty good class. The forward guard helps a lot in the initiation, and the grab is a reliable CC and less against an iframe class. In large scale PvP, don't get fooled with its large shield as a Valkyrie is not really wanted as a tank class but rather more on the supporting role. It has its own protected area and AoE heal skill which is very important during initiation. The vacuum is also very useful, though very hard to hit, while its black spirit rage gives multiple guarantee kills, that is, if you don't die while casting it. Outside those and the Valkyrie is pretty much useless, as its forward guard has really no use against AoE skills thrown by other classes. She's better more on the backline and the sidelines while avoiding the main force of the enemy guild. But again, the support skills makes her a very wanted class for node wars and siege wars. Now going with the new succession update, and you will help the Valkyrie become a faster farmer in low end PvE compared to its awakening form. She's not the best and her movement is still limited, but at least she can run now after you consume her dashes, which is not really true when using the Lancea. In high-end PvE however, its awakening form still edges out. She's still a great farmer though, but not as good as those with giant clans. But she requires lesser inputs as you have lesser skills needed to use. 
in 1 vs 1, the succession Valkyrie has not lost its touch but has not improved either. While in large scale PvP, she does lose her vacuum support skill and the awakening ult, but she still have the PA and heal which is always in demand. Striker, as the name implies, is a brawler type of character in pre-awakening which gains the ability to summon clones to fight alongside him during awakening. In low AP spots, he is a pretty good class with good dashes to run from pack to pack. High end spots however and the striker is just the middle of the pack. It has some burst damage but can't really sustain it for much long. In small scale PvP, the striker is definitely one of the best. The dashes makes them able to move in and out of combat and pretty much attack in different direction in a very short time. It also has both grabs and iframes which is pretty much all you need in order to dominate your opponents. In large scale war, this striker is one of the few frontliners. It is tanky and can easily close the gap towards your enemies, while its black spirit rage gives a tons of damage while being invincible himself. It is very newbie friendly class and can easily find your place in node wars even with lower gears compared to other classes. Now in its female counterpart, the Mystic. Again, another brawler class with lower burst damage but way more tanky and have much more CC skills. While the Striker has a fire element design, the Mystic on the other hand has water and can and will literally throw water dragon towards her enemies. She is currently one of the best PvE classes in the game, be it in low AP areas or high AP areas. She has dashes that can easily outpace other classes, except Musa and Meiwa of course, and even though she has no burst damage dealing skills, but the consistent DPS melt enemies in spots like Akman and Hysteria. In small scale PvP, the Mystic is one of the top dueler. Her low damage is offset by its continuous knockdowns and making it very annoying to go against with. Her skill kit is to literally CC the enemies till kingdom come while having a grab to go against super armor characters. In large scale PvP, the Mystic plays more on the supporting side with its vacuum plus slow. She won't really last long in the front lines, so it's better to pick off enemies from the sidelines and play what she's known best, which is to knock down enemies and just be annoying. Play the mental game that is. Now to our first magic class which is the Wizard. Uses Staff and Dagger in pre-awakening, and a Gador Sphira in Awakening, which gives him an aesthetic similar to Invoker in Dota 2. Though like witches, the wizard can control all the elements in pre-awakening, but will later lean on fire and water to do his bidding. The wizard is an amazing class in low and PvE, making it the best class during the early days of VDO. It moves fast with its teleport, while the Awakening can attack a huge AoE in front and or around him, clearing mobs very fast. Sadly, it's not the same on high-end spots as he cannot really sustain much of his damage. Their AP scaling is also not that good which makes it worse for high-end though better at earlier levels. 1 vs 1, Richards are simply known to be weaker than other classes. Yes, they do have a grab skill but it's too slow to be reliable. Paired it with semi-close range attacks and it's pretty much difficult to avoid being hit yourself. In large skill bar however, then it is also a very sought after class just like Valkyrie and the Witch due to its protective area and AoE heal skill. The pre-awakening stance is also range, making it a little bit safer to attack your enemies, with Ribam Farball not rooting you on the ground. The Witch is another magic class user in BDO, which basically has the same skill set with Wizard in pre-awakening. She is a young prodigy of magic, having an affinity with lightning and earth, which is her main element during awakening using Adsphera weapon. Like Wizard, Witches are a great grinder in low AP spots but kinda falls off in higher CP areas. The Witch is also a little bit worse in 1 vs 1 PvP compared to the Wizard as she got a block that easily breaks instead by grab that the Wizard have. In large scale PvP however, then the Witch adjusts out its male counterpart a bit with its range, SA trades and better CC skills. It's a minute difference though, and both magic users are very much sought after by Siege Guild again due to its supporting skills. There is no succession yet for both our mage classes, so let's proceed to other classes for now. The Archer is one of the newer classes in BDO, 
and is the only true range class in Awakening. He is under Elven Descent, using crossbow for faster attacks and a great bow for sniping. Unlike other classes, the archer basically can wield both weapons at the onset, but most of the great bow skills and damage are locked up until you finish its Awakening quest. It is a great farmer in low-end PvE, killing enemies from miles away, and still is one of the top farmer of high-end grinding spots, but may have some trouble if you can kill mobs fast enough as he's very squishy. In 1 vs 1 PvP, the archer is pretty mediocre to average at the moment. He might have huge range advantage, but the attacks are pretty linear and easy to read. There is also only so much you can do kiting backwards, and it all comes down to kill your enemies before they can reach you. Sadly, with 1 vs 1, most of the classes have more ways to move near the archer than he can kill his opponents, with iframes, forward guard, and super armors coming in play. In large kill PvP, then the archer once again shines. The range advantage gives them the ability to hide behind their allies and basically pummel the enemies with barrage of attacks while being safe themselves. Much of their skills also has crowd control effects and is simply devastating to unleash in a huge group of enemies. Archers are literally the glass cannon with a job to deal as much damage as possible to as many enemies as possible. Moving on to its female counterpart, which is the Ranger. She is one of the very first class revealed for Black Desert and the first elven race we were able to play. She wields bow and dagger as main weapon and dual daggers called Camille Sylvian Sword in Awakening. In Awakening, the Ranger is a great class in low AP spots. They do have stamina issues but they are still one of the faster classes out there and can move in between group of mobs very fast. In high-end PvE, the Ranger is still a decent class. It's far from being the best, but can manage on its own. Going now with PvP, 1 vs 1, and the Ranger is a great class. It has the ability to CC from afar using her bow, then dash in and do huge damage like an assassin using her awakening kit. It also has a grab skill, which is always a bonus for 1 vs 1. In large scale PvP, the Ranger is not really sought after. She usually uses her bow in Node Wars in order to be safe, but her damage really comes more with her Awakening Kit, which is very dangerous to use in a group of people as she is very squishy. She better performs in a role like an Assassin to catch those people from the sidelines while using the bow to try a little damage and crowd control to the main group of enemies. With the Succession update, her role has changed, making her from a well-rounded glass to a glass cannon similar to the Archer. They have less protection and lost their grab in exchange for damage and more damage. As a result, they became a faster grinder in PvE for both low-end and high-end spots. In return, since she lost her grab, her 1 vs 1 PvP capability has decreased similar level to that of an Archer, with a game plan to kill from afar or be dead once close up. In Node War, again, similar to its male counterpart, it became a glass cannon and has a job to dish out huge number of damage to the main group of opponents. They don't have quite the range of an archer, but they have a better AoE, giving the ranger potentially higher kill count. Again, another great succession class, and what many has called to be what a ranger should be all about. Up next, we have the Dark Knight the third and final elven class so far we have in video. The Dark Knight has once been the most OP class during release but has since then encountered nerf after nerf resulting to her falling from grace. She used a Craig Maser as main weapon which is basically a single edge longsword while having a Verdiant in Awakening which is a gloves capable to summon and levitate different swords and daggers. She is a very mobile class and capable of dealing both range and melee damage. In low and PvE, the Dark Knight excels with dashes that lets her move and clear a group of mobs at the same time. The only thing keeping her from the top is that she consumes a lot of blue potions to keep up with her MP consumption. In high AP spots, she is still good but not quite excellent but still above average but just needs more AP in order to be effective compared to other classes. It's in PvP that Dark Knight has been hit a lot after countless of nerf. She might have good mobility and iframes, but her CC are slow and mostly unprotected and having no grab to top it all. She is currently in lower tier in 1 vs 1 and does slightly better compared to Witchards. On large heal on the other hand, the DK does have a spot like other range capable units. She can deal some support damage from the sidelines towards the main enemy group. 
but that's about it. She can help trying to catch running targets, but she can't really do well in 1 vs 1, so she will need help in picking up fights with stray enemies. Now going with the Dark Knight Succession, it's not yet out on Global Lab, but we have tested it in the Korean version. So far in PvE, I can say that they are a little slower grinder in low end spots due to losing mobility skills from Awakening, but faster in high level areas with its higher damage skills. It also has more outplay potential in 1 vs 1 with 2 range CC and more abilities with animation cancels. However, she did lose her range attacks making her potentially less viable in large scale wars. It does need more tests though to find out more about her strength and weakness, especially in PvP, but that is so far our first impression. Now onto our next class which is the Tamer. She is once the only class to be able to have a summon before Richards got their awakening elementals, and the youngest looking class before Shy arrived. She is a melee assassin with short sword as main weapon and a celestial bow staff in awakening. The Tamers are known to have their summon Heilang, which is a huge spirit wolf to help her in battle. This pet wolf has more utility skills compared to the elementals of Richards with the ability to stun enemies and even act as a mount if needed. She is a good class in low and PvE with enough mobility to move fast in between packs of enemies, but will struggle a bit in high-end areas as she needs a lot more work in order to clear a group of enemies while being squishy herself. In 1 vs 1 PvP however, Tamer hands down is one of the top tier classes, with iframes to dodge attacks and the quickest grab in-game to ensure CC. The pet is also very annoying with random CC being applied to your enemy, making the tamer a very difficult class to fight 1 vs 1. On the other hand for large scale PvP, and the tamer falls short to around average. She is an assassin, which as usual prefers to be on the sideline, picking up random fights. But she do have one of the best rage skills, which can basically give multiple guarantee kills from time to time. Talking about the tamer succession, you will lose your bow staff but will keep your grab and your pet. Like other succession so far, it does better results in low end PvE with its solid AoE skills and also does better even in high end PvE dealing so much damage. In 1 vs 1, the tamer is still there on the top, maybe slightly lower compared to its awakening kit as it feels a little slower and lost some iframe skills. But the damage is still there and the pet is always very annoying to handle. Still a great dueler though, and very fun class to play if you want to PvP. Nothing improved in large scale though, as she is still very squishy and is better put on the sidelines picking up random fights. It's sad that she lost her 100% awakening, which will most likely affect her kill rate, but her overall role simply does not change. Up next, we have the Shy, the newest class released so far and under the Shy race, which is a unique class in Black Desert. She is what many people call as the lowly race, easily replacing the tamers in the title. This is also an experimental class from Pearl Abyss, giving Shy the unique true support role, being able to start a professional in alchemy and gathering, having a boost on life skill XP, increased weight, and higher base HP, making her basically the most ideal life skill alt. The downside however is its reduced PvP damage, making Shy horrible in defending spots. She can't really defend spots at all unless you outgear your enemies so much that they can kill you. Still, not being killed is different from defending your spot. Anyway, in low and PvE, the Shy is pretty average. Its boomerang does huge range damage, but the AoE is not so good. She also has a blind spot in front of her as the boomerang attacks in a circular path most of the time. Not to mention that Shy is pretty clunky in dashing in between packs of enemies. In high and PvE, the Shy is surprisingly a great class. She deals great damage and her supporting skills help sustain her grinding. High end spots also requires less dashing around, removing the clunky dash problem that she has. Now as mentioned earlier, Shy is definitely the worst class in 1 vs 1, and worse is simply an understatement. However, in large scale PvP, the Shy is very in demand. Like the bards in the other games, the Shy multiplies the battle capabilities of each player. You can heal, you can buff them with health regeneration, and give them more attack speed using your drum, your flute, or even your main weapon. You won't deal much damage, but being naturally tanky lets you able to stay in the battlefield longer and support your allies for a longer time. You won't really get kills, but she's a fantastic class and a true support class in BDO. 
The next class we have is the Lan, an oriental style class using crescent pendulum and a noble sword as main weapon and a crimson glaives in Awakening. She has taken an inspiration from Blade and Soul game and God of War game with the ability to glide and throw blades on your enemies, and is currently one of the best duelers out there. In low and PvE, the Lan is an excellent class which has the mobility to come in and delete enemies in a single skill, then move into the next pack and use another skill. She can also easily sidestep behind her enemies and deal those sweet back attacks all day long. In high end spots, the Lan is still a great class to have with her low cooldown high damage skill that heals her at the same time, making it less reliant to potions. In PvP, the Lan is a great class in 1 vs 1 with a simple grab damage combo as her trademark. Her medium range grab is definitely one of the best in game and one of the hardest to dodge, while she can just fly out if it ever fails. If she has her black spirit rage available when you grab, then pretty much it's a guarantee kill already. In large scale PvP, like other assassin type classes, the Lan is not really suitable to engage in the front and excels more on picking up fights in the sidelines. Her ability to glide however gives her a fairly unique and niche role in Node Wars, from bypassing enemy front lines and picking up key targets from the back, to jumping above barricades and demolishing key building units and disrupting fort repairs. Up next, we have the Sorceress, the user of the Dark Arts. The Sorceress originated from the town of Tarif in Medea, using an amulet and the talisman to utilize dark energy and fuel her attacks. At awakening, she becomes Death Incarnate herself, using a scythe to cut down her enemies. She was well known due to her iframes, making her very difficult to catch, but the nerf on stamina has limited her iframe capabilities. There is no succession update yet for the class, so we will only talk about its awakening kit. In low and PvE, the Sorceress is pretty average as her mobility is more focused for a battle in a limited area rather than being able to move in between large distances. In high end PvE, she was once a top farmer in Hystria, but the violation nerf hurts her damage output a lot, resulting to other classes being able to close the gap with the Sorceress. But even with that nerf, she is still one of the top classes in high-end areas, as her high sustained DPS is above average compared to other classes. In 1 vs 1 PvP, the Sorceress is definitely one of the top classes even if she does not have a grab. Her iframes are more than enough to find an opening to knock down the enemies then do massive damage afterwards. In large scale PvP however, the nerf on its stamina has pretty much limited the Sork's ability to survive in the front lines. She still does do great damage from time to time if she finds a good spot, but can't really survive that long to deal those damage. Her ultimate black hole though is still one of the best in game, making the sorceress always vulnerable in group gameplay and ranking her higher. Going back now to the melee classes, the next one in our list is the Musa, another class with oriental style martial arts wielding a blade and a horn bow as a main weapon and a crescent blade in awakening. They are BDO's version of spin to win gameplay, consistently spinning and attacking enemies in a 360 degrees AOE around him. This plus the dashes gives Musa the perfect score on low and PvE grinding, being the fastest to move from pack to pack no matter the distance and melting everything around him when he arrives. He's a little bit slower in high-end areas as he needs a little bit more attack points compared to other classes but still one of the top classes out there. He is literally on fire on PvE wherever you go. In PvP, the Musa is also a very good class with super armor dash to keep you safe while trying to find an opening. He does not have a grab though making it a little bit difficult engaging other SA classes but again Musa just zips around while waiting for that perfect opportunity to launch his own CC and can easily sidestep with his dashes. His offhand weapon also complements his dash, giving him range CC. The bow is not used like how a ranger and archer use theirs, but it definitely has its own utility. In large scale PvP, the Musa is known to go towards enemy backlines and unleash the fires of hell. His protected mobility makes him one of the few classes that can easily bypass the front lines to mow down key targets on the back lines. He is also not that squishy as other assassin type characters, resulting to him being able to survive a little bit longer under enemy's heavy fire. This succession path of Musa is one of the rare updates which lowers its PvE capability, as he lost his crescent blade which in turn lost his very popular spin to win gameplay. 
He is still a great class though, both in low-end and high-end areas, as his mobility is not lost. But it's uncomparable on how he can farm with his flaming spear. For 1 vs 1 PvP, I think it's still as good or as bad as its awakening as nothing has really changed much. He has higher damage but still need to find that opening while zipping around. While in large scale PvP wars, then he is also worse compared to its awakening as the main reason why Musa is so good in those large fights are due to his huge AoE range and knockdown skills alongside it, which you lost with succession. Yes, they do deal more damage, but they are not just as effective as they are with its awakening form. Our next class is the Mewa, which is the female equivalent of the Musa, using the same blade and horn bow as main weapon and curse fear in awakening. While the Musa is a flaming spinner, the Mewa is your icy queen that will stab her enemies a thousand times. She also got the protected dashes, giving her a lot of mobility in and out of combat. But in low and PvE, this mobility could not really compensate much on her pretty limited conical attack pattern which is only directed at front of her. In high and PvE on the other hand, the Mewa does a better job with attacks that can shred through the high defenses of the enemy mobs. Also in this high end spot, it will have more chances of grouping up the enemies in front of her compared to low end spots where most will die in one hit before she can reposition to hit more. In 1 vs 1 PvP, Meiwan needs a lot of mastery in the class toolkit to be effective. Yes, she can melt through the shields for the other classes, but Musa can directly bypass those from the back with all the decent happening. Meiwa also has a difficulty against iframe classes, while Musa has slightly better time with them. But Meiwa has larger damage though, and if you can land your CC, then Meiwa can simply do devastating damage. This translates also on large scale PvP, where Meiwa also has a harder time compared to Musa. They have the ability to go directly to the enemy backlines, but her limited AoE lets her attack a pretty limited number of people. She's still a very fun class to play though, but will really need some knowledge in the game in order to play effectively. Now guys, going with the succession path, she has given up the spear and blooms back to wield the blade and bow. Her low-end PvE grinding speed is much faster now with better AoE range and lateral movements which she was not capable in doing in awakening form. Not much has changed in high-end spots as Miwa can still induce huge damage to those high DP mobs. A very great class indeed in PvE. Not as great as the Awakened Musa, but still a top tier. Nothing has changed so far with her PvP capability, both in 1 vs 1 scenario and in large scale. She still zips in and out trying to land that sweet CC, but needs to be very careful with her dashes as the stamina nerf has affected her also. Alright, now on the Ultimate Assassin's classes. The first one we have is the ninja. As the name implies, ninja is a master of stealth, able to blend into the shadows and launch sudden attacks to assassinate his enemies. He wields a short sword as main weapon while preferring shuriken over kunai in offhand. In awakening, he will have the shura katana which is simply 9 different swords at his disposal. In PvE, the ninja is not that good both in low end spots and high end spots. He does have the mobility to move fast but the AoE is very mediocre to hit the enemies efficiently. He does also has the burst damage but not enough to sustain it in high-end spots. With his weakness in PvE, the ninja compensates heavily in 1 vs 1 PvP. He's the ultimate assassin and it shows in 1 vs 1 scenario where a ninja just overpower all other classes. He has the block jump that can directly teleport the ninja behind an enemy and can use a grab directly after it. He also has the damage to burst down any classes and capable of stealth, making ninja a top tier even after the nerf he received in 2019. In large scale PvP, like other assassin type characters, he is more on picking up 1 vs 1 or even 1 vs X fights on the sidelines and can occasionally go behind enemy back to kill key targets, but its usefulness to infiltrate is limited as he does not have that huge burst of consistent dashes to safely engage the backlines. He's a fast runner, but not fast enough to avoid the front lines. Still, the ninja does well on those pickoff and is a great scout with his stealth ability. This succession update for a ninja makes him stop pretending as a samurai assassin and goes back to becoming a ninja. As a result, he does a lot better in both low end spots and high end spots due to his better AoE skills. In 1 vs 1, he is still king of the hill with crazy iframes but he does needs a lot more input now in order to be efficient as he loses his crazy damage dealing skills. While nothing has changed much on large scale pvp as he is still more of a skirmisher and a scout. 
Deku no Ichi, which literally means a female ninja, is the female equivalent of ninja in BDO. She has the same short sword as her male counterpart but prefers to use the kunai more than the shuriken. In Awakening, the Kunoichi acquires the Chakram, which looks like a big hula hoop of death, giving the Kunoichi the ability to have its own version of Spin to Win, dishing out huge damage while healing her at the same time. This ability gives her a better low and PvE advantage over the ninja due to its AoE, but still a far cry from the capability of the top classes. In high and PvE, she still does better with better resource management from her Spin to Win heal, but again considered to be just an average grinder. Again, what the Kunoichi lacks in PvE, they nail it in 1 vs 1 PvP. She has the iframes and grab of the ninja, but has more ways to CC her enemies. Against his male counterpart though, she comes a little bit lower, but still, she is there on top against all other classes. In large scale PvP, the Kunoichi is in a better spot than the ninja with her crowd control skills being somewhat useful. She still can't initiate, but can definitely help the main group with her mid-range spinning wheels that can disrupt enemy charges. This also lets her to be on the backline and protect it from the other classes that may come in with her great 1 vs 1 ability. Now taking a quick look on the Kunoichi succession version, like most other classes, she got easier time in PvE due to big AoEs that deals huge damage. This is true for both low-end and high-end, making her very fast grinder. And again, this improved PvE capability does not really affect her 1 vs 1 PvP advantage where she still comes on top. But her large skill capability is now on par with the ninja as she lost her mid-range CC attacks and that very useful spinning heal. Our last class on our list is the Berserker, a class under the giant race. The Berserker wields human-sized dual axe, which they replace with hand cannon with the help of the dwarves during awakening. A very tanky class, the Berserker charges towards the thick of the battlefield with no regards to its enemies. In PvE, the Berserker is pretty average class in both low-end and high-end spots. They have the damage and the mobility, but they are just in the middle or just around above average grinder. They are very popular though as speed hackers, but seriously, don't follow those guys. Anyway, in 1 vs 1, the Berserker is a great class. They have the grab which makes Wrestling Mania a child play. And if you have the gear, then your enemy will most likely be knocked out from a series of those smackdowns. Same is true for large scale PvP. He is naturally tanky and have high health, enabling him to go in and deal some damage while tanking damage at the same time. A Berserker with an ultimate in a tight spot, such as a castle entrance, also means death sentence to all who tries to infiltrate. He is a very fun class to play with and easy to use but very difficult to master. Before we end, we actually have an upcoming class just released in the Korean version and currently is in the global lab. This one is called the Guardian, which many are calling as the Berserker female equivalent. Though not really coming from the giant race as giant don't have a female on its lore, but the Guardian has the largest female build using one-handed axe as main weapon and a shield at offhand. In Awakening, she uses some kind of a polearm or a long staff, but at the moment, nothing is still confirmed for it. She is a slow class, at least in Spirit Awakening, but has a lot of super armors on its skills. Her dash is also simply mad and can be a gold medalist if there is a 100 meter dash sporting event in the game. She is so far an average farmer in both low-end and high-end spots with huge damage and AoEs, but she has slow animation which kinda limits her kill speed. Same can be said in 1 vs 1 PvP, but could surely improve once Awakening comes out. For large scale though, she is already a very tanky class and can definitely go at the front line. Her dash is simply amazing which can bring her immediately in the middle of the enemy pack and use her super armor skills. People really need to watch her out once that happens and grab her immediately before she can use her skills. Otherwise, she can greatly disrupt the opposing guild's advances as her AoE skills also has CC on them. And that's all that we have for our class list in Black Desert Online. We might be updating this video later this year once the succession update has been stabilized and the awakening form of Guardian is released. But for now, I hope I have somewhat helped you in your class selection. See you guys in the next video. Peace!